G'day guys, Ziggy D here and welcome back for the third and final part in my three-part sponsored series where I explore the world of Magic the Gathering. In this third part, I want to take a look at how the game has managed to stay relevant for players for over two decades through content expansions. I'll also immerse myself in the hype train for the game's most recent expansion pack, Shadows Over Innistrad. There's some fun stuff in this video, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's check it out. For many players, the trading card game format draws a lot of its excitement from unwrapping exciting new cards, trading them with other players, and constantly building new decks to try and come up with the most powerful new strategies and combos. For these players, Magic the Gathering has been releasing multiple content expansions every year for most of its two decades of play. This means that the game is constantly evolving, with new playstyles, new metas, new collectible opportunities, and even new storylines and lore. With a total of something ridiculous like 12,000 plus Magic the Gathering cards in existence now, this can seem a little crazy as a new player to the scene. Thankfully, the game's format system means that you can expose yourself to only a couple of the sets of the actual game all at one time, or all of them, depending on your preferences. For example, the standard format, one of the most popular formats, only uses the game's most recent 4 or 5 expansions. As a brand new player jumping to the game, I had no idea about thousands and thousands of cards that exist. I was pretty worried that this would actually leave me completely out of the loop with a mountain to climb before I could get really involved in things like metagame talk and strategy. However, when I first jumped into drafts and constructed games, I found that I was actually only really exposed to two of the most recent expansions, Oath of the Gatewatch and Battle for Zendikar, both of which had strong ties to each other in theme and mechanics, and this is by design. The way Magic the Gathering expands is through a system of content blocks. These blocks are each comprised of two expansions, one large and one small. These expansions share a story arc, theme, playstyles and mechanics together. There are about two blocks a year, which means that in February you might be defending Zendikar from interdimensional Titan Eldrazi, and six months later you might be investigating rumours of vampire and werewolf attacks in Innistrad. So, as it turned out, I was drawn into the world of Magic the Gathering at the perfect time, right before the release of a brand new block, the Shadows Over Innistrad block. This is a perfect opportunity to experience the hype for a new expansion right at its fullest moments. At the Melbourne Grand Prix tournament I got my first taste of the new expansion. There was new cards being revealed live on the show floor by people in cosplay with people crowding around to check out the new cards, and I even got to try and solve an Innistrad themed puzzle room where we were recruited as helpers for the creation of a new type of zombie. Hello dear friends! Are you a new group of assistants, are we? I think so. Well, welcome to Garov's lab here. I am Ogle, his finest assistant, and you are our newest assistant. Not quite as fine as I am, but new all the same. Fifteen minutes to escape, so I'd get started on the puzzles. Ogle, I need you to prepare the body parts for my new zombie. <laughs> Tick tock, friends! The time is ticking! Okay. Remember, test of the mind! That's a yeah, area on my man. Okay, maybe it doesn't count. Well, let's do some maths here. One, two, three! Oh, that's kind of two thirds of one, but there's another two thirds. So we've got four, oh, that's so, four that's and one third fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Sections of fingers. This is harder than what you talk about today. So they have to add up together? Yeah. Is that, is that what it is? I don't know how to do the number addition. We're so glad that. We must find two numbers that add together to create a number divisible by 100, but I don't think that's... Is that even possible? Can you add two numbers together? Oh, it's all sticky. You have a brain? I think we have a brain. You have a brain? 97! Well, well done! You did indeed build a zombie and you have a brain! I've seen too many movies, you might die first. I feel like I did some things. Yes. <laughs> you counted wrong I how many times? I, I made a few mistakes, yes. But, but, that's how I did at learn. least do a thing right. And I read things to people, so that's, I think, you have a worthy soothing, in itself. Uh, inspiring voice. And I lived. And I turned the key as well. Yeah. Good job. Therefore, I'm the one that saved us all. Excellent. Through the card reveals and the puzzle room, I learned what the shadows over Innistrad block would be all about. Zombies, werewolves, vampires, angels with blood-tipped wings, and the horrors of the night. This new expansion is my jam. Gothic cathedrals, grisly murders, twisted experiments on the living and the dead. I am all about that. 
The art of Magic the Gathering that I've seen so far has been generally pretty awesome, but the themes of Innistrad really tickle my fancy. I'm especially fond of the aesthetic of the Archangel Iverson and a transformation from this like angel of light to this crimson tipped winged angel of death. Another thing I learned was that Shadows of Innistrad was actually a returning location for the magic story. It had first debuted in 2011 in the Innistrad block. To relive some of the past, we sat down at the GP and did a draft exclusively from one of those previous expansions, Avacyn Restored, which was the final expansion in that block. This was a really interesting experience to see a past expansion, and I even pulled a really rare card, Cavern of Souls. I'm gonna be honest, there was no real reason I included that tidbit of info, except to brag. Yep. <laughs> it turns out that not only was Shadows of Innistrad a lore and story revisit for the game, but it's also the return of popular mechanics and playstyles from those previous expansions. For example, the popular Transform mechanics, which features jewel-sided cards that can flip over to transform. Often innocent looking humans flipping over to become vicious werewolves to shred up your opponents, for example. This idea of cycling in and out game mechanics and metagame seems to be a common strategy for the game as it grows over time, both a mixture of new content and references to the nostalgia of the past. The next stop on the hype train for Shadows Over Innistrad was for me to attend a pre-release event in Sydney. Pre-release events are the early access of the Magic World, a chance to get in a few days early and play in an event using nothing but the new cards. You buy a pre-release box at your local event location or game store, and build what's called a sealed deck there, a deck of 40 cards made from 6 booster packs as best you can. It's a little bit like drafting, but you only pull from your own booster packs, and you keep all of the cards. It seems like pre-release events are some of the most exciting times for Magic, for a lot of people. Everyone's clamouring to see what the rare and popular cards will be. Everyone dreams of pulling something great from their first six packs. Maybe you'll score that sweet new Planeswalker Mythic card. Well... <laughs> it just so happens I did. Oh no. First pack. <laughs> no way! Jace on Rebel what? Secrets. <laughs> he pulled a Jace. Oh my First, first pack. pack. <laughs> Out of all my magic experiences so far, I had to say the pre-release event was the most fun. The excitement of the new cards, sensing everyone else's hype, and building a sealed deck were all very memorable experiences. I've already said in the other videos I really like drafting, and sealed is a lot of fun, just like drafting. Amy and I also played our most epic magic game of all time on that night as well. We faced off with our two sealed decks, me trying my hardest to win, but tactfully so, so that I wouldn't have to sleep on the couch that night. And this is how it ended. Ziggy, what did you just do? Uh, <laughs> Tell the camera. My Raging Clue deck is actually working, and I just summoned and sacrificed like five or six clues on a turn. And now this creature has plus seven, seven. <laughs> what are these yes. things? These are all, these are all one, one humans that have been summoned via, via clue sacrifice. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna do another one. So I have now four, five, seven, one, one, seven, one, one humans, and this guy who's <laughs> he's a he's an eleven, eleven something. He's an eleven something. He's going to summon a clue to the board. Okay, and then I'm going to sacrifice the clue, which gives this guy another plus one. So he's now an infinity, infinity damage character. Very good. All right, now. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play just the wind to return this creature to your hand, which kills the enchantment. <laughs> Stitched Mangler. Oh no. Which taps this guy. No. And then. No. I'm going to attack with all of this. So, let's just calculate this damage out. Right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 damage. Right. Plus, this guy's 9 plus 3, so that's 12. So that's 20 damage. 20 damage. Okay, I'm on 2 life. <laughs> yeah, there's 2 life left. <laughs> she has 2 life left. She's lucky she's been healing each turn. <laughs> okay. Hopefully she can't kill me next turn. I don't think she can. I think we're okay. Hopefully. I only have, I only I have, have six so life left. I have so many blocking abilities. I only have six life left. Okay. We just have to hope she doesn't have like a haste that deals five damage or something. Yes. Otherwise I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Alright, what are you doing? Is that your only You got two cards. <laughs> oh no, what? <laughs> what did you just top deck? What did you just top deck? <laughs> okay, okay. One, two... 
What is this? Now he's mine. Game control. Oh, no. oh my god. Oh my god. She just. I, what did I just say? I just said. Hopefully she doesn't have haste. And what does she do? The worst possible thing. She doesn't just get a haste creature. She steals my fully buffed creature and gives it haste. What the fuck? So how much damage is that thing now? Oh, and I, 10, 11, 12. Oh my god, I should have I should have left like one angel untapped or something. <laughs> if I just left one untapped. If I just oh one of these guys, god. if I didn't attack with one of them, <laughs> I would still be alive. And I would win the next turn. <laughs> wow. That was an epic game, holy shit. How epic was like, how do you feel right that now? That was such a top deck. Oh, I'm so happy. That was pretty amazing. I'm so happy. <laughs> that was pretty amazing, holy shit. And my next card that top was... deck. Top. That was the top deck of the century. Mm. So that concludes my three part series of my adventures in learning Magic the Gathering. I really enjoyed documenting this experience for you guys, so I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching it. And I truly do hope that some of you guys who are like me, kind of a bit iffy about whether they should give the game a go, but curious, actually get out there and give it a go, because it might turn out to be something that you'll really enjoy. I honestly didn't really expect Magic to grab me in quite the way it has. Outside of the events that we attended as part of the sponsorship, Amy and I have been playing a ton and visiting local game stores trying to find like local drafts and groups to play with. We even took some intro packs around to some of my siblings and father and taught them to play and had some fun games with them as well, just so that we'd have more people to play with locally. So I've really enjoyed it and at the very least we've found like a game that's just a lot of fun for us to play. Like we were looking for a two player board game for the longest time and uh, this is at least that. But uh, you know with the fun I've had at things like pre-release events and drafts it's something that I'm going to actively be seeking out further in the future. Just finally I'd like to say a special thanks to everyone that I either played against or met at various magic events or that shared magic tips with me on Twitch and on Twitter and things like that and you know you guys who have been commenting on the YouTube comments and like helping other people out with their questions and answering some questions for me. You guys rock, thank you for the very warm welcome to the Magic the Gathering community. I really appreciate it. So guys hopefully you've enjoyed the series, that is going to be it for now. Until next time I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.